But how do you think we can encourage more people to farm organic? All great movements start from the bottom. They don't start from the White House or Buckingham Palace. They start in the fields and the streets. Um, I, I am really honored to be a citizen of Atlanta and, be, uh, and, and have grown up and, and seen what Dr. King and John Lewis and um, um, Ralph Abernathy and Andrew Young had to contend with. And um, that was grassroots organizing of enough is enough. Like, we have to realize that what we are doing with our land is degrading it. We have to save our farmland. We can't just develop it into tracts of homes and think we're going to get our food from Chile or the Central Valley of California. We have to save our lands. We have to learn about the bees. We have to learn about how precious the bees are to our existence. We, we have to learn to live a poetic life like you have been living for 30 years. And what you and Jeremy are doing is off the hook. He told me a, a little bit in brief about his, his story and how it happened and how all the different places you went to, including Afghanistan, including Africa, is so hip. And we have to, I don't know if you saw the news footage this weekend, but there was a village in northeast Burkina Faso there was a raid, 160 people were killed. That's right. 160 people. And for Americans, we're like, okay, what's that mean? It's Burkina, what? You know, like, no, we, the, this, the, the, this lanternfly moth that is destroying the crops in Pennsylvania is a metaphor for, you know, what's that metaphor for, like, if a butterfly flaps six wings in Guatemala, a, a building... A will, building falls over, oh, yeah. Yes, in Tokyo, right? We are that connected. And, um, you know, we, ha we hopefully, there's good tribalism and there's bad tribalism. We have been under the sway of bad tribalism in the form of religious wars, resource wars, and hopefully we can get past this to live. I mean, we do have enough food to feed the world as it is now. But right now, it is not delivered in an efficient way. It is wasted. And the resources are being um, eradicated. So we're, we are going to have to learn to save our Mother Earth. I suppose maybe a message from from this conversation is 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 to anyone, not just young people, but you know, find out find out the truths, find out the answers, and don't feel afraid to implement them in your own life. That your your individual life can make a difference in 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 what you know and how you conduct it. It absolutely can make a difference. When I when I pulled into Philly the other night, I turned on PBS and there was a show on the science of memory and how the activities that you engage, in which you engage, can actually change your brain chemistry between the hippocampus, which is sort of the regulator of the other parts of the brain. The actual things that you do can physically change the chemistry in your brain. So if you are prone to depression, you can change that. And you can change the chemistry. And another part of memory is movement and exercise, but also paying attention. They said it is so important for the brain. You can change, you can regenerate the brain by paying attention and focusing, not just giving up. And I think that is a, a, a modern dilemma of either tacitly giving up or overtly giving up. No, we have to fight that fight. And it's a, not a violent fight. It's Dr. King's fight. It's a peaceful fight. We have to clean this up. We have to, um, um, we have to set an example. We have to model for our kids to not give up, to fight, to be inspired. And I love that metaphor of paying attention, to save your brain. And by saving your brain, you change your brain. And by changing your brain, you are living a more vibrant life. And to a degree, that's what we're talking about, right? Peace, climate, the world, 
living together. And then wondering why you, you, you don't sleep or wondering why you're depressed or wondering why you feel bad about yourself. You know, the truth is, the, as you say, the answer is pay attention, educate yourself, enjoy a physical life, you know, get get the brain stimulated, get the blood pumping, take ownership in many ways, right? Take ownership of your right to be here and your right to be healthy and your right to think and ask questions. And also work for someone else besides yourself. Mm. Like the idea of service, of whatever that means. As, especially us that are engendered with a fortunate upbringing. We don't understand what people in really difficult situations, whether they're in sub-Sahara Africa or in South Central LA, uh, unless we have actually lived with them, we, we, we take it for granted. And so that's what this idea, uh, Dr. King said, of servicing humanity is such the legacy that, that I would want to live. And it's not easy, right? It's not easy. It's, it's, it's so much easier to talk that talk than to do that talk. It really does take self-reflection over time. But when you actually, I mean, making art is servicing. When you're making film, you are actually making something for other people. So you know that feeling, correct? To a degree, yeah. Although, if I'm honest, it's, it, it, I think, I, yes, I agree with you. And I feel like that's a, uh, an important component to making something. There's a sort of generosity. And also there has to be a sense of, of, of offering, of giving something positively. Um, but for me, I've, I've never gotten more of a, a sense of um, fulfillment than actually a lot of the work I do with Jeremy or, or the stuff I do that you really feel is sort of selfless in the end, you know? So it was, I'm glad you brought that, that point up. Service, serving others and, and, and finding a sort of generosity in yourself of doing something that, that you, you hope may benefit someone with nothing in return. And it's the best, it's the best joy at the end of the day. Absolutely the best, yeah.